And uh, for more on that story, Mike Walker from the Antarctic Ocean Alliance joins me now from Hobart, Tasmania, where that agreement was signed. Mike, as a campaigner, how happy are you with this announcement? Um, very. It's today we've seen history, and I don't think uh, you see that um, happening all that often. I mean, it really is more than being the largest marine protected area in the world now. I think, as your piece uh, points out, it is the first time ever that countries have come together to create a large-scale marine protected area in the high seas. And what exactly will that mean for the area? What kind of protection will this entail? Well, quite simply, it means that in the fully protected uh, area of, the, of this marine protected area, and so that's, that's over one point million square kilometers of water, and basically nothing can be taken out. Nothing, there, no, there's no extraction. And um, so this area is now safeguarded, but do you have concern for other areas outside the Ross Sea? Um, I didn't quite get the question, but in terms, if it was if it was with regard to the monitoring and control, I mean, uh, Camelar, the the body that has made the decision today, the Commission for the Conservation of Antarctic Marine Living Resources, uh, is made up of 25 parties. So that's 24 countries in the European Union, and they've proven um, over the the more than 30 years uh, of of Camelar's existence that they have the capacity um, and the commitment to conserving Antarctic and, con and uh, to, to conserving the Southern Ocean. Right. I was asking about other areas in the world that are not uh, uh, benefiting from, from the same kind of agreement. Why can't countries get together in other areas and establish safe zones, protected zones as well? Well, it's a good question. Um, as we all know, I mean, the ocean t covers the majority of the planet. It is a blue planet. And 70% of the ocean is, is what is called high sea, so outside of nat um, nat uh, national jurisdictions. And that's so m coming to a decision to protect or conserve any part of that, it really is a momentous occasion in that it's, you know, countries don't give up or make decisions unilaterally about areas outside of their control very easily. And um, of course, we know that it was in the 1950s, at the height of the Cold War, that the Soviet Union and the United States and others came together to conserve the landmass of Antarctic for uh, peace and science. So in many respects, uh, today is almost the start of finishing that job in that, of course, it is the ocean, the southern ocean around Antarctica, which actually gives life to um, to, to the area and to all those charismatic uh, creatures, which, which well, which I'm, uh, you can see on the screen right now. All right, Mike Walker from Antarctic Ocean Alliance, thank you very much for that.